Not Real. Good morning to you, sir. <laughs> good morning, John. It's good to see you. I was reading through some of your work and I have to say it didn't seem like you were worried about too much in this economy, in this market. Is that right? Well, I'm less worried than the past. I think a year ago, people were worried about the hard landing. Then they started talking about the softish landing with a short and shallow recession. Now people talk about the soft landing, but there actually there is serious possibility of what people refer to as a no landing, that growth remains above uh, potential and inflation remains sticky. And actually of all scenarios, the one that is more risky for the market compared to a soft landing is a no landing because markets were pricing in six rates cut by the Fed earlier this year. Now they converge to what the Fed is telling us only three cuts. But what if uh, growth is well above potential because of technology or other factors, and then the Fed doesn't cut three times, only two, one, maybe some people say zero. Uh, last year, revisions of expectation about the Fed in August and September led to a 10% correction of equity. So I think that that's potentially, paradoxically, that good news on growth may be bad news for the market if that implies the Fed is not going to cut as much and as soon as people expect now. So just to put it in a headline, Noria Rabini thinks the biggest risk is upside risk. Uh, right now, yes, because the data on Q4 suggests that growth well above potential and even Q1 suggests that maybe growth is going to be around 3% plus. We're not having a landing of the economy in spite of the Fed cutting rates. So just to put another headline in this, yes. even Nouriel Roubini is optimistic. I mean, we're looking right now, people looking for reasons to kind of gut check a runaway record rally that we've never really uh, seen in this kind of environment. And the gut checks aren't coming. Does that sort of give you pause or is this basically a new paradigm where the artificial intelligence and the whole idea of productivity that you're buying it? Well, there are several things. Uh, first of all, uh, last couple of years, inflation fell without growing, growth slowing down sharply, in spite of the Fed tightening rates. And in my view, not because of what the Fed does that push inflation lower, we got lucky because there were three negative aggregate supply shocks post-COVID that led to lower growth and higher inflation. And they were reversed. The impact of COVID on labor supply and production of goods and services, the impact of the Russian invasion of Ukraine on commodity prices, and the zero COVID policy of China. These were negative supply shocks that were reducing growth, increasing inflation. Those went away. And that explains why you had still high growth and lower inflation. So it was not the Fed job that did it. It was just we got lucky. And on top of these three positive aggregate supply shocks, now we have a fourth one that's actually much bigger. And secular, this the AI revolution, this technology revolution that probably over the next decade, not this year, is going to increase productivity growth, is going to increase potential growth, is going to increase economic welfare, and is going to reduce cost of production. So I think that's what the market is reacting to.